Over the past week or so, the league community has been surprised, confused and somewhat disturbed by a pick that is taking over the meta, roaming Janna top with Smite. Now on paper, this seems like the fastest way to get yourself a ban for inting, but in high ELO, it's proving to be really, really strong. In fact, it's now the highest win rate champion in its role and is exposing a flaw at the very heart of how League of Legends works. Look, I know it, you know it, we all know you should be subscribed to the Score Esports. The thing we don't know is if you haven't done it yet, why? That's what we don't know. So until we have the answer to that, just subscribe. Then we don't have to worry about that question. I'm not even sure this makes sense. All right, so let me just lay out for you just how weird this situation is. For the past 12 years, Janna has been a support champion that has sat in the bot lane, saving AD carries asses with shields, heals, and tornadoes. So you can imagine everyone's surprise that she's now appearing in the top lane. Not only that, she takes smite, which is meant for junglers, and then she doesn't even spend any time in the lane anyway. She just roams, she just off. Honestly, if I told you weeks ago that I had a Janna on my team that played like that, you'd say they were inting. But right now, Smite Janna Top has the highest win rate of any top laner in the game at 57.03% across all ranks. She is technically now the most effective way to win top lane. And she doesn't even spend any time there. I cannot stress enough how mad this is. It's being played at the highest level of solo queue very successfully by the likes of former LCS pro Lolo. Well, this guy wants me. He's pissed. He's get pissed. They want me, bro. They're so mad. Just kill them all. I have my moonstones. Huge value. Yeah, yeah. Keep going, keep going. Get a pet though. Go all the way. I got you. I got flash all too. Just go, just go. Trust me, trust me. I got you, I got you. Fix it the feather. Yeah, yeah, there it is, baby. Now, this whole playstyle for Janna seemed to come from the European player Happy Happy 2, who had a spotlight thrown on them by the YouTube channel Happy Chime Noises. They've played over 150 Janna top games already this season, with an incredible 57% win rate in Masters. It is no fluke. They often start by helping their jungler with their first buff, they harass enemy laners and keep their own teammates from being pushed under turret, they occasionally go top for a little bit of XP, but they're soon out on the map again, making the enemy jungler's life a living hell and smiting away their camps whenever they can. They do die a lot during their games, but more often than not, the enemy nexus is the one that falls first, with the enemy team wondering what the f*** just happened. Now on the surface, it's not that obvious why this works so well and why it's specifically Janna that can pull this playstyle off. Well, firstly, she's quick, very quick. In the early game, she uses her 8% bonus movement speed passive to roam quickly between lanes, help shove waves and counter the enemy jungler. In the mid to late game, Happy Happy 2 likes to double down on this speed by building Moby Boots and Shirelias to run down enemies in an almost comical fashion. Her shields, slows and knockups can flip any enemy gank on its head, which also has the added bonus effect of being incredibly f***ing tilting. Imagine clearing your jungle perfectly and setting up a great gank only to be denied by a roaming Janna three levels lower than you. Never underestimate the power of tilt. Janna's kit isn't the only reason this works though, Happy Happy 2 and their disciples often take Spell Thief's Edge to get money from poking enemy champions or turrets in any lane. The Smite is also a huge deal, they often use it to steal away the first buff the enemy jungler does, which, coming from a jungler, is catastrophic. And for the rest of the game, Janna's team has two Smites to secure Barons and Dragons. It's kinda sick, to be honest. Now all of this sounds great, but we haven't mentioned one thing, the enemy top laner. While Janna is off being a mad lass on the rest of the map, the enemy top laner gets endless uncontested waves of farm and XP, as well as gold from turret plating and most likely the turret itself. You couldn't ask for an easier lane, and yet somehow all the gold and XP they could possibly want isn't enough to stop Janna and her team. Now if that sounds mental, Welcome to the heart of the problem here, the gold bounty system. 
It's a bit complicated, but it works like this. If one player has earned 300 gold more from farming minions than the average enemy player has, they get a 50 gold bounty on their head, which grows larger if the gap increases. So, very quickly, the enemy top laner gains a massive gold bounty on their head because Janna is dragging down her team's average gold earned from minions because she's not farming minions. Sure, the enemy top is getting pretty fed off all the gold, but Janna is getting her whole team ahead across the map. And eventually, they're going to group up and kill the enemy top laner, at which point they'll cash in on that fat, fat bounty. On top of that, Janna and her winning team may be able to cash in on objective bounties too, such as turrets and dragons. Because I'm picking Janna, a champion that inherently doesn't need gold to actually function, I can be 5,000 gold down on this Renekton, and mm. all of a sudden, my Jinx, who I've just been in his lane the whole game, has seven kills. My Akali mid lane has 10 kills. Yes, their Renekton is 5,000 gold ahead of, of us, but we still have objective bounties. And your super, super fed scale and carry now gets even more gold injected into them because they're able to get objective bounties from a position in the game where they're actually like up on gold. It's just, I have no gold and your other support has no gold. So you're behind on gold overall. So it's it's really, really weird. And it kind of abuses that mechanic, I think super hard. And my feeling is that people are gonna look for other things too. You know, I've seen uh, the ghost roaming Gragas now. Some people do it with Rakan. There's like a few, a few versions of this and it's just like, clearly there's a lot of problems with top lane. When the funnel strat shook up the entire meta in 2018, Riot had to implement sweeping changes to fix the game and return it to some semblance of normality. I wouldn't say things are as crazy as they were back then because unlike funnel strat, we haven't seen Janatop in pro play yet. But that doesn't mean we won't see Riot jumping to fix this very soon because as we've already discussed, this isn't just a quirky problem with one champion. It exposes some massive flaws at the heart of top lane and the bounty system. If you've played any league over the past couple of years, you'll know how this system can be a huge game deciding factor. This playstyle has exposed the cracks. Will Riot seal them up or are we about to see the mighty bounty system crumble at the hands of a roaming Janna top? Just like Disco Nunu back in the day, a roaming janitor. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove this. I've made, the, I've made the point. Let's not belabor the point, eh, lads? Let's just get the f***ing video going. You'll know how this system is a f***ing what? What is it? Can be a huge game deciding factor. You'll know the bounty system is f***ing say it. You'll know the system can be a huge game deciding factor. You'll know how this system can be a huge game deciding factor. Well, f me, he's done it.